in analytics, there is a huge change at the moment, driven by this maturity after, let's say, 10, 15 years of uh, a slow start. Now I think speed is picking up tremendously and changing societies. And the reason why is every cause, every movement, especially in 2017, always has a large digital presence. So we have opportunities with analytics and now that there's suites and integrations between different products, that we have the ability as an industry to, to measure movements, especially things that maybe are social or political or charity like the Red Cross. There's opportunities to better connect with audiences that can re relate to issues or opportunities and be able to connect with them um, in ways that you never could before. For one, if I uh, identify something in India is that we can help out uh spread a lot of awareness with, with a lot of data that can be presented for road safety. And I have been championing this, uh, this uh, particular topic for a while and so that's why I can speak about it. So there's a lot of data that's available of what and how and where can we go ahead and prevent uh, accidents on the road because in India there's a lot of uh, incidents of uh, road accidents and I believe we are uh, the most vulnerable. That's because, uh, you know, the population is such and that there is no such awareness and uh, you know our police force is uh, less in numbers and that is the reason why we are not able to avoid uh, a lot of accidents and a lot of fatalities. There are a lot of NGOs and a lot of uh, volunteers who have gone ahead in this sector but then I believe where they short fall is lack of data. And when people come to know about data and when you know there are a lot of insights that come out in the market and people are able to see that in the holdings and if you are able to present it in a way which is good. I'd love to see the government, the Modi government, uh, and all the you know um, fields around it sort of see how they can improve women's safety using analytics. You know, seeing uh, where are cases you know reported from, what can be done, what sort of solutions can be implemented. Uh, you know, what sort of care needs to be taken by all these victims, how they can be rehabilitated, etc. Just using the numbers and looking at not just the what from the numbers, but the so what in terms of how it can help. Uh, that's something which I think India really has an opportunity to work on. My wife is a doctor actually and I see a lot of improvement in that, like robots, uh, surgeons or kind of that things. And actually some big data stuff uh, which can cure something or finding a cure to some uh, diseases. Uh, so there are actually some open source public networks. Uh, you can install that and your computer will participate in calculating a disease to uh, a cure for some disease. That's awesome. Yeah, I think healthcare is a, is a perfect example when we talk about the impact of data on, on society. Um, being from Kansas City back in the United States, we have a company called Cerner. And Cerner's mission has really been to overhaul the, um, we'll call it CRM for lack of, lack of a better term, uh, really the patient records process within hospitals and within the, um, within, within the healthcare industry. And the reason that that, that is so important is it allows us to build this foundation of data integration. We're talking across the country, you know, being able to connect somebody's um, different needs from a healthcare perspective across different entities that didn't exist before. Well, now that that foundation is set, analytics can now take over and begin to identify the patterns and behaviors that we're starting to see, whether it's in particular disease sets, whether it's in um, particular gender sets, age groups, whatever the case may be. That's when the data begins to tell a story, and that's, that's when analytics changes societies. Specific in India, I think uh, India as a market in, game, in terms of uh, technology, uh, it leapfrogs. So it goes behind, slows down, and then suddenly it jumps up to be uh, at par with the, the developed countries. So I do see that this year being uh, towards the end of leapfrogging. And uh, 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 in, in terms of digital analytics, it is almost there at a par uh, with the developed countries uh, uh, as far as digital analytics is concerned. Specifically, if you weigh in the app analytics market space that we have in India, which is far more mature uh, as compared to uh, the developed world. I've gone to saying that analytics is a 50-year career, and what I mean by that is that over the next 50 years, we might shift within analytics and what we're analyzing, but there's this frontier of how do we understand from a medical perspective, how do we make sense of all the data we can collect with little microtransponders and RFID tags, how do we collect that in something that hasn't even been invented yet? How do we 
understand traffic and how it impacts a city using data. How do we, how do we impact that? How do we change the flow of traffic? We see for the first time that machine learning and artificial intelligence is actually moving very heavily into the, 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 the area. And the, the, the risk is that it will be the data taking care of the data. So, so it's actually self-optimizing websites because the machines can do stuff that we cannot do. Now we, we started doing uh, analysis with, with Google and Watson in relation to actually crunching some of these big data, um, uh, big data stuff we have. And what we can see is some of the questions that they can find and some of the correlations they find are really something that we wouldn't have found without them. Because they, they crunch all the data and look across everything and if we, if we were supposed to have manpower doing that, then it would be an immense, immense assignment. So actually, computers are the biggest threats. <laughs> we're not at the singularity yet, <laughs> but I think we're getting closer. And I, I, I think this convergence of technology with understanding, and I've argued today in the conference, uh, for example, that, that the availability of processing power cannot be underestimated. The fact that you have open, soft, open source software available and you have cloud computing available, um, in combination with these enormous data sets that uh, weren't there in the past and can now easily be, 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 be crunched and used for predictions and for finding patterns uh, will completely disrupt our industry in the, in this year and in the next few years. Then our, uh, our job in this will change radically because we would be either on the strategic level or made redundant. We have to continue to think innovatively about um, the technologies that we use, whether it's, whether it's big data platforms, whether it's isolating, doing better processes and taxonomy. Um, all of those things are important. We preach the four Ps. You gotta have a platform, you gotta have a process, you gotta have people, and you gotta have a plan. You gotta have all those things if you really wanna take advantage of data, um, because data is not going to slow down. For the first time, we have an ecosystem, and I think Google's done a great job uh, allowing us to have avenues for the first time to take action with our data. I hope that 2017 um, brings along integrations between data sets. So I work a lot with Google Analytics, and I've seen over the past year a really big shift in just instead of just focusing on the individual silo of web data or SEM data or email data, more and more it's about the full complete picture, connecting it all the way together. So that's either you know using BigQuery if you're using Google Analytics Premium or if you're using the regular Google Analytics version, it's using Tableau or Sheets or Excel to actually bring all that data together and actually try and present a, a meaningful story. But my, my hope is for 2017 that we really start to, to focus on the big picture and work across the organization instead of just within your individual team. And that's what I propagate. I mean, wherever I work and whatever team I, I work with, I allow them to have visibility across. Because analyst, uh, analytics is, you can't do it in silos. You need to have the complete picture. And unless you have the complete picture, you can't go ahead and do a better work. People have, have realized they have too much data, that they're spending way too much time going from one system to the other, looking at individual data sets. So I think the expectation is that we will see a huge growth in the, in the area of uh, the DMPs, the digital marketing platforms, uh, digital data management platforms, where we, we can tie in all our different data sources and start correlating, working with one data set. So instead of having Google Analytics data set and a Facebook data set and a YouTube and whatever. We will pu pull everything together and kind of be able to automatically use the data from one system in another. We all carry uh, smartphones now. I think uh, you cannot underestimate the, the, how it's changing everything that we have computers in our pockets. The reality is, is that the, you can hold on to the existing world, like the, the existing world is about web and it's about these different areas, but that's not the future world, right? So you can hold on for a while and it's going to still grow for a while, but eventually it won't be there anymore. And the ease of, of for example, how it's uh, totally changing uh, transactional uh, environments from cash and credit cards to direct just having a wallet on a phone, uh, empowering 
a huge amount of people that didn't have that in the past to be able to transact also digitally. It's comp those three combined really will change everything very, very fast. India has an uh, explosion of users starting to come on internet, starting to have mobile phones. Uh, so a lot of internet businesses see that they're growing phenomenally well. And when you are growing massively, when you're growing very fast, uh, you do not look at data analytics as core competence, or you do not look at data analytics as a competitive advantage. Uh, so India is at a stage where they are seeing massive growth uh, in, in internet businesses, and soon in about a year's time, that growth is going to plateau. And that's when the, uh, the, the digital analytics will arise or will become as a competitive advantage for the businesses. Uh, whereas in the Western world, uh, the industry gets matured very quickly because the uh, Western world is far more homogeneous in nature. Uh, and and uh, you know, India has 1.2 billion people, uh, so it takes some time as well for industry to mature. Uh, but but it, it's, it's plateauing. It's the, the growth has started to come down. So uh, now the business owners will start thinking, how do I have a competitive advantage with analytics rather than how do I measure the growth numbers that I have? And it's not just mobile. Mobile is just a way, it's just a method right now, right? I think that it's going to get smaller. It's going to be more data sources, more things to work with. And so it's more saying, how do we adjust to this, to this new way of collecting data, this small way of collecting data? How do we make more sense of that than opposed to how do we, how do we live in the world that, that existed in 2005 or 2000 when a lot of these tools we used were around? And so the biggest threat is that there's a shift happening that's monumental and nobody sees it because their behaviors don't change and, and they think that it's going to be, you know, they have time. The time is now. That's the biggest threat is if you don't act sooner and you, and you wait for these things to come around, it's too late. If you wait until it's mainstream, it's too late. It has already disrupted uh, travel and hospitality completely. And I would say the same for retail happening right now. Retail is going through tremendous change uh, and it, it, it still remains to be seen what the future is. Can you actually be a retailer with physical locations only or digitally or will the digital pure players evolve into also being physical, have, having physical presence? Take Amazon as, a, as the big example, opening physical stores now as a trial. I think that is a good example of, of a digital pure player going offline. Uh, I've seen cases also for successful online shops that start to open physical stores and it actually drives more online sales because it comes with the combined credibility of having both a digital presence and a physical presence. Google just released a feature right before this interview about how they know whether a place is busy inside or not. So from a local marketing perspective, they can tell you the peak times that somebody visits a retail location. And they know this with a level of accuracy based on little transponders that we have in our phones. So basically, we're carrying a big data machine on us, every one of us, and that is our, our cellular phones, our mobile phones. And that creates all kinds of different opportunities for tracking, all kinds of different opportunities for analysis. It can be used for good. That's what I think is going to happen over the next 50 years. It can be used for not so good or for you know, advertising. It can be used for other purposes as, as well. But the hard part is getting to the point where everybody has a way to collect data. And I think that's, that's happened. Like that's, that hard part is done. It's so many steps to reach from data to actual concerns or to actual, actual actions that it can break in many ways. And to be sure that data is correct, if, you, if, your, if your data is wrong, then everything is wrong. So make sure that your data is correct and try different instruments for that maybe. And uh, to have maybe two instruments to measure the same thing because you have to be sure. So there's a huge assignment that is not very sexy in, in actually focusing on how do we maintain the level of data quality. Because once we start pouring all this data together, it, it's kind of a, one of the, the big issues are how can we maintain data quality? Because all the stuff we do with analytics and, and all the data-driven stuff and big data, it, it all assumes that we have good data. Right? It, but if we have bad data, and it's so easy to corrupt our data, if we have bad data, all the decisions are in danger of being the wrong decisions. 
Uh, again, in my industry, in the marketing industry, I see us starting to accelerate that process. I think we're starting to get momentum there. And so I really expect us to see uh, um, greater traction in that space. I think uh, we analytics has been one of those things that maybe we listen to, but I think now that people are beginning to trust it and beginning to really uh, um, take advantage of the story that it can tell and use data as an asset, uh, I think that momentum is going to continue to grow this year. A data democracy that we are seeing, that larger number of people having uh, different data sets to combine them and having uh, uh, analysis done. Uh, I think that's something that we will see very rapidly. Uh, the, the also, I think the, the value of like a vertical as an analyst will go down and you know, the other verticals like product management, marketing guys will start becoming pseudo analysts themselves. Uh, so uh, I think there's capability addition that is happening uh, and will continue to happen at a scale in, in world market is what I see. The marketing industry in particular, um, with the, really with the onset of the, of the internet, right? So it, it really transformed the way marketing was able to reach people and to shape what we call their customer journey. The challenge was is the acceleration of their ability to make decisions and really people and the consumer became empowered. It wasn't the organization anymore. And now organizations have been struggling to get back into uh, really taking advantage of what data can tell them from a marketing perspective, right? So if, I, if I'm spending dollars, I should be able to understand how I'm influencing a customer's decision journey and ultimately drive revenue. Uh, never before, I don't think, that has marketing been equipped to be able to answer that question. I think that um, it has been transformed. And I think uh, industry and organizations are in different spaces, but they're all now on the path to really being able to leverage analytics and answer that question of, I spent a million dollars, how much did it get me? It's the year where we should think out, outside the box. Because of these changes happening so fast, I think I've said this for 10 years, but I will say it with an even bigger passion this year, that, that the time is now for really rethinking how we can do things differently. And I think the number one thing to highlight is this traditional approach uh, in, in, in digital media where agencies help advertisers find audiences for their products uh, through marketing is, I don't want to say fall apart, but it's totally changing. And, and the, 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 the separation of technology and media and strategic advisory services is happening extremely fast. And this will challenge um, the advertisers, but also very much the big agencies in our industry, the big six and everybody else will, will, will see this and it'll totally change how the business model for the future agency will have to be built. A big part about Super Week in India, which, which I found really special, is the people. Um, data, you can tell, is a, is a thriving, it's an up-and-coming industry in, in India. And I think it's, it's actually getting pretty mature. The, the questions that I'm being asked in the United States are some of the same questions that I'm being asked by attendees of Super Week in India. And for me, that, that's really special. If we are to adopt a more, uh, you know, newer approaches, like the industry is talking about VR, AR, AI, so how are we able to incorporate that into our marketing efforts and how that can flow from the brand bit to the business benefits. Once we're able to do that, it'll again help. Certain other ways, I think if we were to, you know, India is known as great, uh, we can pick up trends and adopt them for India, but I would like to see Indian marketers, you know, come up with trends that the rest of the marketers across the world can uh, pick up. In Yandex, for example, we started to build some machine learning algorithms who can get some information, some valuable uh, knowledge uh, from that. And uh, that's interesting in many, in many things. You can uh, know more about your people, uh, your clients, for example, uh, your customers. I think this is an interesting time and place for anyone in the marketing sector, especially in India today, a sort of signs that an industry is maturing. And all of these have come up in the last six months in India. We also have the opportunity uh, as Indian marketers to sort of make a name for ourselves, to service Indian brands, but also for India to be a powerhouse for content marketing globally. The way we are now known as an IT powerhouse, I believe with our English language capability and understanding business and marketing, it's a big opportunity for Indian marketers to step up and be a powerhouse and content in, in the eyes of the world.
Thanks for holding the pillows. <laughs> We have to. Tr I have to try it one day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just because it exists. Yeah.